Hi everybody, this is Evan from Book Reviews Kill. This is my first YouTube video that I've really made solo, so uh, bear with me here. I'm still getting some of the kinks worked out uh, with OBS and everything, but I'm excited for this particular video because I went full ham and I said, you know what, I'm just going to do a whole tier ranking of all of the fantasy series that I've read, with a few caveats here. I mean, I have read quite a few fantasy series, but I'm sure I'm forgetting a few things here because over the years I've just I just forget stuff. And I'm not really including some of the things that I've kind of dipped into, right? So I read the first book in Powder Mage. I'm not gonna include Powder Mage, but I am going to include Malazan because I have a pretty good opinion about what Malazan is. But for the most part, I've finished all of these series, you know, and uh, and I and I really like pretty much all of these. I mean, I don't have like a ton of really awful things to say about these, but I do like some of them way more than the others. So let's just get right into this. Uh, leave a comment down below if you think that there's something here that's missing that I really need to get to. Uh, I might have already tried it and it's just not in here, but all right, here we go. So uh, this is all random. Uh, I just put all the pictures in here. So here we go. This is the, the randomized tier ranking of the fantasy series that I have read. So first we have The Band by Nicholas Eames. Uh, Kings of the Wild and Bloody Rose. So this is a trilogy that the, th the third book hasn't come out yet. Um, I don't know really. I think we're going to put this right. For now, we're going to put this right in the top of B. Just like literally right in the middle of everything. Um, I kind of want to put it in A because it's just so much fun. We're, okay, we're going to put it in A, but I think that we're going to, I think it's going to move over a lot. I just can't, I can't quite put it into B. Uh, Kings of the Wild, if anybody hasn't read it, I mean, it's it's just classic D&D &D style fantasy. It's really easy to read, but it's really compelling, too. There's, there's great characters, good action beats and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I just really like Nicholas Seams quite a bit. Uh, next, we have The Lost Years of Merlin by T.A. Barron. So this is a series that I read when I was really young, and I think maybe a lot of you listening or watching, uh, you know... <laughs> you've, you've had your dalliance with Lost Years of Merlin. I think it's classic... Um, I do. I don't think it's aged like super well. Like I, I tried. I tried reading it again. I'm gonna put it in B because the my reread of it. I, it definitely kind of. It wasn't as compelling as it was when I was 12. You know. Um, I do. Th I, th I think it's solid, and I think that it's overlooked quite often. Um, these are the years where Merlin was a kid in a land called uh, I think Finkera or something like that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just very, very good secondary world type stuff with a cool main character it's all first person um but i think that it does get a little flowery definitely and the pacing is kind of weird and it's just kind of slow and i don't know it's uh merlin's like not a awesome character to read about <laughs> he's like super moody uh but it, they're they're good next we have the icewind dale trilogy by r.i salvatore i'm putting this into a tier um i think i, I should have said at the top of the video but this is all my opinion you know I, I, I used to listen to YouTube videos and they'd say that. And I'd be like, isn't that kind of a given? You know, you'd think so. Uh, <laughs> so Icewind Dale for me is going to go right above King, uh, Kings of the Wild uh, in the A tier. I think it's just, that's right where it belongs. Icewind Dale is so classic. Okay, so this is where people are going to start uh, yelling at me in the comment section. So we have next here the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington or Islington. I still don't know which way to pronounce it. I I'm gonna put it in C. I don't think it's worthy of the D tier. I don't know if any. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm really gonna throw any of these into D tier. I'm just too charitable. But yeah, like Canius, I just, it just, I never felt a good sense of place. I was really confused the whole time I was reading it. I feel like the plot was much more complicated than it needed to be. I think the ending is, you know, it's got a reputation for being really well pulled off, and I agree. I think it is really well pulled off. But I think that the 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 journey to get to the ending was really rough. It was really, really boring and confusing. And I don't know, I just, everybody's kind of nodding and grimacing. And, and uh, I just, I never really felt like I was in a fantasy world, you know? So yeah, let's see. I mean, it's, it's definitely not bad. And the ending definitely makes up for it. Uh, next we have The Great Coats by Sebastian de Castell. These are great. These are a swashbuckling good time. Um, it's a first person story as well. And they're really, really fun. I think I might put it mm, above Merlin in the B tier. I think it, it can sit right here. Um, because it's like great coats is really fun. Um, I think I just didn't really get a lot of depth out of it. I don't, I don't really really like remember a lot of 
scenes from it if that makes sense like not a lot of really memorable stuff happens it's just fun while it lasts if that makes sense okay so now we have the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee amazing trilogy I'm putting that in S tier personally I don't know why more people aren't raving about these books I, I mean people should be talking about this constantly it's an incredible trilogy um, I really can't think of many faults at all with it I think it's unique uh, it's innovative it's just innovative <laughs> it's innovative uh yeah i mean i just really think that um, greenbone is a very good example of where i think fantasy should be going or at least one avenue that fantasy should start exploring much more often which is throwing a little bit of technology in there i mean there's like planes and phones and stuff um, while keeping a very kind of like epic fantasy secondary world feeling in there. I could go on about it forever. I just really, really love those books. I think they're fantastic. Uh, another set of books that I think are incredible and are going uh, straight into S tier as well are going to be Joe Abercrombie's first law books, and I'm going to slide those right up to the very top of S tier next to uh, Fonda Lee's Jade City. Um, I, I'm just not even going to really stick on these for very long. I mean, if you're a fantasy fan, you have read these, um, and if you're just getting into fantasy, everybody is constantly talking about these books. Um, I think that Joe Abercrombie has some of the best voice and some of the best character work in fantasy. His fight scenes are incredible. Um, I personally, if I could say like one thing that I don't love, and this is just a, a very personal taste thing, but I do think that uh, his his plots um, and kind of like where the character's storylines and the story arcs and stuff go, they do seem to kind of like not really fizzle out, but they kind of just, they go in directions that are, almost a little too realistic <laughs> but you have to be realistic about these things you know um all right so next we have red wall by brian jocks jakes um so red wall i feel like red wall for me is this is this thing that i want to be better than it actually is i really like it but it's just i don't, I don't know i don't know it's just they, they feel formulaic i've read like nine or ten of them and I don't hate them, but I am going to slide them into the B tier, um, right right at the bottom of B tier for now. Um, it's nostalgic for sure. I do think the books are very slow, and there's just so much filler in there. Um, and like I said, they're a little bit formulaic, but I mean, they they really are beautifully written um, at a lot of parts, and especially those earlier books. Um, they're bangers for sure. Uh, I would recommend Redwall to anybody in like their early to mid teens that's getting into fantasy um, and then like reading them to kids and stuff too like Brian Jakes uh, did for um, I think blind kids actually yeah he seems like he was a really cool guy but yeah Redwall I don't know it's kind of like with Lost Years of Merlin like as I get older it's just like yeah I don't know all right moving on we have Throne of Glass Throne of Glass by Sarah J Moss Okay, so I'm not finished with this yet. I'm kind of, I'm still reading these, um, but I'm on like the sixth one or something. So I think I can have an opinion about these. Um, I don't know. I think Throne of Glass, I have a lot of thoughts about it. And I've, I've said a lot of those thoughts on the podcast, but I feel like Throne of Glass is just fine. Like I, I like the action beats. I like the world building. Not a huge fan of the main character. I think that Sarah J. Moss has a really, really amazing ability to set set up stakes and deliver on them. Um, but also, like, it's just something about it. I, I just, I don't love it. I think I'm going to put it... All right. Um, I think it's going to go in B tier in the bottom. <laughs> it's all right. You know, I don't think it deserves the hate it gets. I think it's really exciting for the most part, but yeah, it's just a solid B tier for me. I haven't finished it yet, so that might change. Next we have The Tawny Man by Robin Hobb, and that is going to go in A, not quite S for me, but it's definitely gonna go in A, and I think I'm gonna bump it up to the top of A tier. Tawny Man is really, really good. Uh, there's, especially in the first book in this trilogy, uh, a heart-wrenching few scenes in a row, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, the last book is like 900 pages. <laughs> I was kind of exhausted by the end of it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very sad. Um, but it's Robin Hobb, you know. There's no Robin Hobb that I've read that's under an A tier. And it's gonna, this one's going to go at the top. So next we have The King Killer Chronicle. And... Um, yeah, I mean, welcome to my YouTube my, my YouTube channel, everybody. Welcome to Book Reviews Kill, where we think King Killer is fine. Uh, I mean, I'm... 
I, I want to put it at the top of B, but it's but if we're looking at this in, in purely like my experience reading these books, trying to really isolate how I felt my first time reading those and, and not all the thoughts that surround them and not all the ire that I have for what's going on with these books. They're going in A, but I think I'm going to put them right between Icewind Dale and Tawny Man. So it's not S tier for me. Um, I have a lot of reasons for that. I could make a whole video about that. But I'm not going to sit here and try to say that they're not good books because of all the drama that's going on with them. They are very good books. And I think it'd be silly to say that they're not, uh, at least for me to say that they're not. All right. So next we have Stormlight Archive. Boop. Going right up to the top. And I think I'll put that even personally. That's going right above Joe Abercrombie at the top of S tier. Stormlight is incredible. Like it is, it's our, it's our, it's, it's our thing. You know, it's, it's, it's this generation of fantasies, Lord of the Rings. Um, what else can you say about it? I haven't read anything else that's even close to a, as captivating of world building. Um, say what you want about Sanderson's prose. I think it improves with every book and um, like, you got to hand it to him by now. You guys, like you just have to hand it to Sanderson. I mean, like these books are absolutely incredible. They're going to stand the test of time in my opinion. Uh, and they're going right up to the top of us here. Next we have Dragonlance Chronicles by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. I was tempted to put these in S. I don't think they're going to go in S, though. I think they're going to go at the top, right at the top of A. I loved these books, and maybe it's just because I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed them. But, the, I mean, it, it was a romp. It was the romp I was expecting. But also, they're really deep, and they're really exciting. And they, they keep their excitement, and they keep their depth. And if you haven't read Dragonlance, I think that they really, really hold up. There are a few dry spots. There's definitely a few spots where you're like, oh, okay, didn't know we were skipping that far ahead and we were skipping over to here. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Dragonlance is a, is a cornerstone of fantasy. They're incredible books. I really, really like them. All right, so up next we have uh, the David Bad Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. Um, I would say I like these a little bit more personally than Throne of Glass because of the uh, like unique world building. Um, a few of the characters are really awesome. A few of them are kind of annoying. Um, but I would put these right in B tier, right below Great Coats and above Merlin. I think that's a good spot for them. Um, they get really epic. They're cool books for sure. I think that they're a little bit lengthy, and the, and I feel and personally, I'm not a huge fan of lots of lots and lots of political intrigue. Um, I, I like it depending on the story and stuff, but with these books, I, f I felt like there was just a little, it, like the pacing really just kind of drags sometimes. Um, but then it gets ratcheted back up really quickly too. Um, they're, they're pretty awesome books. If you haven't read them, definitely check them out. All right. So next we have the broken earth by NK Jemison. These are a tier for me. Um, I, I mean, I don't love the second book. I don't think it's as good as books one and three, but because book one is so incredible, and because book three really wraps things up in one of the most epic, like visually epic ways I've seen in fantasy. I'm going to put it right up. Mm, I'm going to put it in A, but I'm going to put it between Kings of the Wild and Icewind Dale. I think that's a good spot for it, for Broken Earth. Um, I think that if, if all three books in Broken Earth were as good as the fifth season, it would be an S tier series for me. But the the... The story just kind of drops a little bit for me, um, but it picks back up in the third book. But it's, it's book two is kind of hard for me to get through. Um, all right, so next we have Shades of Magic by V.E. Schwab. You know what's interesting? It's like this is another series where I thought the second book, I was like, what? what's going on right now? But then the third book just really ratchets everything up and it gets so cool. Um, uh, this is a definite A tier for me as well. And I think I'm going to put this right between Icewind Dale and King Killer. That's a good spot. I like where my A tier is sitting right now. All right. Uh, okay. Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. Um, boy, oh boy. You know, this series, people really love these books. They love them so much. And I and I get it. I, I liked parts of them quite a bit. Um, for me, I thought they were pretty repetitive. And I was pretty exhausted by it by the end. Um it felt to me like these characters were just, they were running around outside, either getting captured or fighting. And just, there was so much killing and there was so much bloodshed and like not a whole ton of depth to anything. Um, I just really struggled through these books. I don't think that they're badly written in any way. Um, especially like once, once you get into the, the third and fourth books, I think that Gwen's prose like 
it gets really impressive and you know some of the stuff that he's saying is really cool but yeah i don't know i just man nah, i'm gonna put it in c uh put it i'll put it above lycanius i think it's like right there yeah uh chronicles of narnia is going in c bottom of c i don't know whatever i don't really i don't i don't think much of these books like i, I think that uh lewis gets lumped in with tolkien a lot and i i don't really know why like i mean they hung out together um i think narnia is just fine like i i, I don't know <laughs> i don't really have much to say about it um yeah whatever uh the dark tower by stephen king is an s tier for me but it's going at the bottom of s tier now why is it going at the bottom evan um i've read this series twice i have loved these books so much i think this is stephen king's masterpiece this is magnum opus um i love how all of his not all of them but i love how quite a few of his other books uh, tie into the Dark Tower universe and everything. Um, for me, I I do feel like Wolves of the Kala and Song of Susanna and a decent amount of book seven could have probably just been two books. You know, it, it could have just, I feel like a lot of it could have just been slammed together and it didn't need to be as long as it was. It gets really weird and not in a fun way uh, at, at certain parts, but I do really love the ending. I know that's a controversial take, but I think the ending is brilliant. I love it. Um, and I think that, you know, Gunslinger, Drawing of the Three, The Wastelands, Wizard and Glass are four incredible, incredible books. All of them, if, like I said with Broken Earth, if uh, Wolves of the Kala, Song of Susanna, and then the first part of book seven uh, were all as equally good quality in my eyes as the first four books, it'd be at the top of S tier, but it just kind of misses that. But it's still S tier. All right, Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, you're all going to... I'm gonna get so much flack for this. It's the top. It's the top for me. And I don't. I don't even. I don't, I don't even care. I don't even care. Like it's just the top. And I just. It's Lord of the Rings. Uh, moving on. It's Lord of the Rings. Uh, Divine Cities by Robert Jackson Bennett. I'm gonna put these in the top of beer. Beer. I'm gonna put these in the top of B. Right in there. Um, I don't think it's quite A because it's just. It's a little. It's not industrial. It's just a little bit too urban for me. And like personally, I don't love pantheons and I don't love gods and stuff like that much. Um, I think that what 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 Bennett did with this series is really really interesting with, with, with the way that the plot works out, and also having each book be a, a lot different from the book before it. You know, but it all it all, it all ties very much in together. It's a very unique series. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like uh, it was definitely not not super loving like the the last book from what i remember i read those books like 10 years ago or something um but very solid books absolutely all right farseer trilogy is s tier and that's gonna go um yeah whatever this is my channel <laughs> farseer is right below lord of the rings and right above uh stormlight archive i think farseer is incredible it's it's really one of the best i've ever read I, I vividly remember reading that series for the first time, and I found them all in a Goodwill for a dollar ninety nine each. I just liked the covers. I didn't know much about them at all, and I was blown away with how much I enjoyed them. Um, it sets the standard, in my opinion, for um, grounded, character focused fantasy books. Amazing. All right, Gentleman Bastards by Scott Lynch, also going up in S tier, but at the bottom of S tier now. Why is it at the bottom of S tier? I do agree with the sentiment that the each book gets a little bit worse. And I don't mean that in the way that like any book is bad. I just, you know, book three is not as good as book two. Book two is not as good as book one. Um, the Lies of Locke Lamora, you know, that's an S tier, top of S tier type book. And I really like book two, uh, Red Red S Ships Under Red Skies, Red Seas Under Red Skies. Uh, the casino thing is great. Um, it gets a little boring and, you know, when they're on the ship and stuff. And then the third book, um, you know, I don't think I hate it as much <laughs> as some other people did. I, I I liked it, but I've only read the third book once, and I've read uh, Lies and Red Red Ships or Red Seas or whatever twice each. Um, I love those. I love those books. They're amazing. Uh, Scott Lynch, uh, you're my hero. If you're watching this, you're my hero, man. All right, uh, Rario Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan. I'm gonna put that all the way at the top of A. That's where it's going. It's not quite S for me. Um, and the reason it's not quite S for me is because it's it's just not like it's it's like the the world build for me is just so just stock fantasy and there's nothing at all wrong with that at all. Uh, but it's just like 
It just it misses. It's not. It doesn't have that super unique factor to it for me. You know, that's gonna bump it up into S tier. But it's absolutely worth your time. One of the best fantasy series I've read. Michael J. Sullivan rocks. I haven't read his new stuff yet. I really want to. Uh, next we have the Magicians by Lev Grossman. Eh, um, yeah, that, these are pretty cool. I I I don't. Th- I think I've seen a lot of, you know, disappointed takes for the Magicians. I've seen it compared to Harry Potter. Like it's grown up Harry Potter or whatever. Um, I'm gonna put magicians. Jeez, um, this is kind of a rough one actually. Because I I really liked book one and two, but I don't remember really loving book three. I think right at the bottom of B makes a lot of sense for magicians. All right, next we're going with um, the Belgaria. It looks like by David Eddings, and all right. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to put it in C. I, I think a lot of people really love these books. Um, I don't know. They're, I think maybe I, maybe I wasn't young enough to, or old enough or whatever. Maybe I, I didn't read them when they came out, and they weren't like a big staple of my childhood. So, you know, I don't know. They're, they're fine. <laughs> There, it's very stock fantasy again, you know. I mean, like there's like a dark lord, and this kid is like much more than he seems, and blah 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 blah, and it's it's fine. Um, but I don't know. I didn't think much of it. Uh, next, we have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. Um, you know, it's funny. Everybody told me that they that they liked a- Throne of Glass more than Akatar, and I think I like Akatar more than Throne of Glass. I think I, I like the the characters. Um, you know, it's kind of like. Uh, I think I feel like a good comparison would be The Office and Parks and Rec. You know, like if if Throne of Glass is The Office, then Court of Thrones and Roses is Parks and Rec. Like the Court of Thrones and Roses, I feel like just has a much more rounded out uh, set of characters. I'm more interested in these characters than I am in the ones in Throne of Glass. I feel like the ones in Throne of Glass, like you kind of got like like in The Office, you know, you got like your core, like three of three of them, and then the rest of them is just kind of like whatever. And then with Court of Thrones and Roses, it's like every character matters. They're all really important. Um, and I, I think the writing is punched up quite a bit, and uh, the world building is really cool. Um, I'd. <laughs> They're good, dude. Like they're good books. I I don't think, uh, and especially like I like the Nesta one, the very last. I'm gonna put it right in the right upper B tier. Uh, so it's above David Bad, but it's below Great Coats, and I think that's a totally fine place for Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, next we have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. <sighs> okay, I would put it between Farseer and uh, Stormlight Archive. But it's not done yet. I do think it's better than First Law. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good spot for it. All right. So it's between First Law and Stormlight. Right in there. Right in the middle of S tier. Well, I guess it's not the middle. It's it's in the chunky middle part of S tier. Okay. So now we have a Deadly Education uh, Skolomance by Naomi Novik. These are pretty cool. Um, I'm going to put them at the top of C. Uh, Skolomance... It's not like I don't like the narration. I don't like the main character's like way of describing everything. But the the, the things that are happening are really interesting. Uh, it all takes place at the school, and the school is like alive, kind of. And there's uh, there's like a lot a lot of like systematic implications or systemic implications, I should say. Um, you know, things that are going on in this world that we don't really see a whole lot of, but we we see the effects of them. And then our main characters are kind of like trying to deal with them while also trying to deal with like the problems that are going on with this school. And it's it's really cool. I think that uh, Naomi Novik's kind of like prying a part of like what a magical, like what the problems with a magical world would be. Um, it, it's it's cool, but I just, I can't get past, like I just don't like the, the, the main character's narrative voice very much. And it was really distracting for me. It's very um like rambly, like some, like a paranoid person is just kind of like writing in a journal, like late at night. Um, and I, I just don't super love that style. I think I would have been a lot more interested to see this entire world and the machinations of it and, and like the nuance of it through kind of like a more third person omniscient kind of um, perspective, but that's just me personally. I know a lot of people really love these books. All right, Malazan Book of the Fallen is going to the top. Uh, so I have only read the first two a couple times. I've got a complicated situation with Malazan. I just know 
how good it is. I'm, I'm aware of the quality of it, and it's going to go in S tier right there. The only reason that it's going in the middle of S tier and not any further down or further up is from what I've read, it's incredible, and I know it's going to stay that good of quality, but I haven't finished it. So this is the only thing on this entire list that I haven't finished. I just, I'm very confident of the quality of Malazan, and it's going right there in S tier for me. Next, we have the Dark Elf Trilogy by R.A. Salvatore. Uh, so these are the only Driss books I've read, are the uh, Icewind Dale and the Dark Elf Trilogy. Um, I think Dark Elf is... Not that good. I think Homeland is really good, but Exile and Sojourn are kind of a mess. Like, they're they're fun. They're they're not bad at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think it's going towards B, and it's going towards the bottom of B, and I think it's going to the bottom of B. <laughs> Exile and Sojourn are not that good of books. Homeland is great. It's a really awesome book. It doesn't do enough heavy lifting for the whole trilogy. You know. I just, I mean, because in, 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 Ice, in Icewind Dale, you have Streams of Silver, amazing, the Halfling's Gem, super epic, you know, the Crystal Shard kicked everything off, and then, yeah, with Dark Elf, I mean, it's cool to see Dritz's kind of beginnings in the first book, and kind of how he ends up where he is in Icewind Dale, but the, the journey of him ending up there is just, I don't know, it's just kind of a mess. All right, next we have a little series, you might have heard of it, it's called Harry Potter, by JK Rowling. Um, so yeah, trying to look at this um, and just my experience with the books, not with JK Rowling being a shitty person. Um, but with Harry Potter, this is tough to judge. It's tough, it's tough to like take my nostalgia goggles off for, for these books um, because I've read them multiple times. I do think they have a ton of weaknesses. I think the immersion factor in Harry Potter is amazing it, it, it would bump it to s tier if we were just going on immersion um but i'm going for like my own personal opinion on these books like whether or not i think these are like quality books i think that the first three are kind of like mystery books and then it, it really gets a lot more complicated and mature as we go i'm personally going to put harry potter in the a tier but i think i'm going to put it yeah right above king killer no right below king killer <laughs> Right below King Killer and below Shades of Magic, but not, yeah, right between Shades of Magic and Icewind Dale trilogy. And I think I'm okay with this. I think I'm fine with this. All right, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Really awesome books. These are A tier for sure. Um, consistently good. Really unique, really different, uh, really compelling. Uh, a, a young character who you can get really invested in. Um, and just just weird books, you know, just I feel like Pullman is kind of talking about stuff that you don't really see very, very often in fantasy. I'm going to put an A um, and I'm going to put it right between King Killer and Shades of Magic. I think that's a pretty solid spot for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Lightship Traders by Robin Hobb. This is another A tier, not quite S tier, but it is, in my opinion, a little bit better than Tawny Man, just because it's different and it's, it, it, I just love, I love ships and um, like, you know, it's funny. I said, I didn't love political entry, but like the way that Robin Hobb writes it, it's, it's really, I could read about how farmlands are being distributed or, or divvied up. <laughs> if Robin Hobb is writing it, then I don't care. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's not quite S tier for me, um, but it is just, I think with Tawny Man, it's just, it's so sad. <laughs> it's so heart wrenching and there are sad moments in uh, life ship but there's also there's just like a lot more going for it i think um so yeah just bump it right over tawny man next we have the inheritance cycle by christopher paulini um i think these are these are good these are i mm, they're b i'm gonna put them right above yeah yeah uh, this is good i would put them right above the dark elf trilogy in the bottom of b so it's between magicians and dark elf in the bottom of b uh, with Inheritance, I think Aragon and, and um, Eldest are really, really awesome, and I think that Inheritance is pretty solid. I think it's a pretty good conclusion with a few caveats. I think that there are a few parts of it that are like, why, what, what was, what happened to that? Oh, that was really convenient. But Brissinger, I didn't love it. I don't think it, that it's a very good bridge book, you know? Um, it was pretty boring for me personally i think the first two books are great um yeah i haven't read murtag yet either but i think that if you haven't really read much fantasy inheritance is great 
it's a really good place to start. Um, yeah, they're 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 solid. Next we have the Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Um, these are just barely not S tier, but they are at the very top of A tier. The only reason I say that is the third book and the fourth book definitely feel a little bit slow. Like they're not bad at all. I'm putting these at the very top of A tier. These are 100% worth your time. Absolutely. These are some of the very best fantasy books I've ever read, as you can see by this chart. But also, it's just it's just not quite S, you know? It's not quite up on the same level as these heavy heavyweights up here. So, but it is almost it's like right there, you know. I feel like it's fine. Uh, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. That's going to be a B. Um, I'll put Six of Crows right between Court of Thorns and Roses and City of Brass. Six of Crows is really good. A uh, Crooked Kingdom is a little, is not as compelling for me personally. I think it was the pacing or something, but the characters are incredible. The characters are so good in that series. It's a duology. You can hammer it out pretty quickly. World building is great. Um, you know, you've got kind of like a younger cast of characters, but they're all very compelling. Yeah, those are great books. Uh, next, The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. That's S tier for me. Um, but the bottom of S tier. Now, why is it at the bottom of S tier? Um, I think it's just too long. It's just way too long. It's um, But here's the thing with Wheel of Time is like, these characters feel like my friends. Like... Robert Jordan and a little bit Brandon Sanderson, like they, he was able to create these characters that they feel so alive and they feel so fleshed out because you spend so much time with them. I just love being in this world. I love how like cringy it is sometimes. I love how conservative it is sometimes, uh, not politically, but just like, you know, these, these kids just grew up in a small town in the middle of nowhere. Like, and it really shows. And I like watching them grow. It's so epic. It's it, it, the fact that it takes the time that it takes is kind of, it really feeds into how epic it is. And I think that it delivers really well in book 14. Um, it's S tier. I mean, it's, it's the wheel of time, you know? Uh, and then we have the winter night trilogy by Catherine Arden, which I think is going to go in the bottom of a tier uh winter night i don't know why more people aren't raving about this series it's very very good um wow i didn't do anything in d uh yeah i don't know how about this for kicks we'll uh we'll just throw chronicles and Narnia in d <laughs> how about that chronicles and Narnia goes into d uh but that's it for me everybody thank you so much for watching this uh video i know that it might have been a little shaky I think I messed up a lot at the very beginning, but this is a, this is a first try. We'll, we'll try this again some other time. Uh, and uh, this is really fun. I can make all kinds of tier uh, list rankings for you. Just let me know what you'd like to see. I love talking about fantasy. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, notification bell and all that good stuff. I have a Patreon, Discord, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And of course, happy reading. <laughs>